Hi, today we're going to start talking about fluids. So we have two goals today. Hey, we're just going to start talking about fluids. And secondly, we're going to see that uh, we can still apply Newton's second law even in a situation that involves a fluid, a force applied to an object by a fluid in particular. Okay, so fluids. So we're going to talk about some new things as we usually do when we talk about a new topic, but we're going to apply a lot of the things we're familiar with to fluids. Uh, particularly today we're going to talk about how to apply Newton's second law. And in a little later on we'll talk about, um, in a couple of days, we'll talk about energy conservation applied to fluids. So a lot of old ideas applied to this new topic. So one thing we should talk about first is what is a fluid? How do you define a fluid? And you know, on the street, maybe uh, you kind of use fluids and liquids interchangeably, interchangeably, but in physics, we actually have a broader definition of what a fluid is. And a fluid is something that can flow. Okay, so basically anything that kind of takes on the shape of the container that it's put into is a fluid. And so a fluid can certainly be a liquid, but it can also be a gas. Okay, so we're going to start talking about uh, the buoyant force. So it's a new type of force that uh, is applied by a fluid to an object. And in general, it's an upward force exerted by a fluid. And next time we'll actually see what the origin of this buoyant force is. It's associated with the pressure and the pressure being different at different places in the fluid. But we'll talk about that next time. And so generally you get an upward force exerted by the fluid on an object that is either fully or partly immersed in that fluid. And so let's take a little survey about uh, what you think about the buoyant force in a particular situation. There's a nice question we have here. So we've just got a wooden block and it's floating in a particular fluid. We know the weight of the block, the mg in other words of the block, is 100 newtons. And it's floating exactly 50% submerged in this particular fluid. So the upward buoyant force exerted on the block by the fluid is... Now which of these five choices do you think sounds best? Has a magnitude of 100 newtons. Has a magnitude of 50 newtons. Depends on the fluid density depends on the block density. Depends on both densities. Okay, so just take a few seconds and see which one of those answers you like the best. And again, this is just some block you've chucked into some liquid and it's simply floating there. So we haven't tied it down to anything. There are no strings. So just basic floating block. Okay, so let's see what we got. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn by analogy here. So let's say we take that same 100 newton block and we just stick it on a table and we ask about the normal force exerted on the block by the table. So how can we possibly figure that out? Well, what we do is we draw a free body diagram. And so we know the force of gravity applied to the block by the Earth is 100 newtons down. And the block's just sitting there at rest, so there must be no net force. And so we're applying Newton's second law here. The fact that the sum of all the forces equals the mass times the acceleration, but in this case, there is no acceleration. In other words, the sum of all the forces must be zero. The forces have to balance. So that tells us the upward normal force applied by the table on the block is 100 Newtons. So we can apply exactly the same method to the block. So here's our 100 newton block floating in a beaker of fluid. How do we figure out what the buoyant force is? Let's draw a free body diagram. So we know once again the Earth exerts a downward uh, gravitational force on the block of 100 newtons. And the block is just at rest in the fluid. So there must be a net force of 100, uh, sorry, there must be a support force from the block we call the buoyant force upward of 100 newtons in order for the forces to balance. So once again, we're applying Newton's second law. Okay, so there are a lot of similarities between 
the buoyant force exerted on a block by a fluid, and the normal force exerted on a block that's sitting on a table by that table. Okay, so the buoyant force in this case is 100 newtons. It has to be according to Newton's second law. Don't have to worry about the density of the block. Don't have to worry about the density of the fluid, how much of the block is submerged. You don't have to worry about any of that. Now, when we talk about what's called Archimedes' principle, we'll involve all those ideas, okay, to figure out uh, buoyant forces in particular cases. But you can also get the buoyant force straight out of applying Newton's second law. So don't forget that. Okay, so let's just go beyond this and see if we're uh, really comfortable doing this. So with our 100 Newton block on a table, we stack a 50 Newton weight on top of it. What's the normal force exerted on the block by the table now? Okay, so once again, we can draw a free body diagram. And we can stick the 50 Newton weight and the 100 Newton block together as one system and treat them as 150 Newtons worth of stuff. And so there's a downward 150 Newton force applied by the Earth, an upward 150 Newton force applied by the table. And so once again, we see that uh, we can apply Newton's second law to figure this out. We know the force is balanced because the, there's no acceleration. And how does the table know to apply 150 Newton force to the block in this case, where if we take the weight off the top, it only applies 100 Newton force? And it's really because the block pushes down harder into the table, and so you get this extra force applied by the table. And it's hard to see that, but that's what happens. If you stick the same 50 Newton weight on top of the 100 Newton block in the, uh, the water, what happens is you can really see the block go further down into the water. And now you have a larger buoyant force. We will find that the buoyant force is proportional to the volume of fluid displaced by the block, but all we need to do to calculate it in this case is to draw a free body diagram to our block plus weight system. And so we've got a net 150 Newton downward gravitational force applied by the Earth, and the system is at rest, so there must be no net force, so we have to have an upward force uh, from the liquid back on this system, and that's applied by the fluid, and that has to be 150 Newtons for the forces to balance. Okay, And so again, you can see this connection between the buoyant force and the normal force. But in the normal force case, it's hard to see that the block pushes further down into the, uh, into the table. In this case, it's very easy to see that the block goes much further down into the, into the liquid. And the liquid then exerts a bigger force because of that. And it has to be 150 newtons just because of the free body diagram and Newton's second law. Okay. So the moral of today is, yeah, we're dealing with a new topic, fluids, and we will learn about some new things for fluids, but don't forget that you can still apply Newton's second law to find the buoyant force. Okay, the sum of all the forces equals ma can still work even with fluids. Okay, so that is it for today. Nice, simple lesson on reminding you that uh, you can still use Newton's second law.